Well, good evening, friends in Ocone. Uh, we meet again in our lockdown situation, and God is good to us. It's good that we have this opportunity of fellowship, even though it's perhaps not the uh, close fellowship that we desire. Nevertheless, we're thankful to God for it. Thankful we can come around His Word each evening. I want to read to you from Psalm 28, verses 6 to 9. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exults and with my song I give thanks to him. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. O oh, save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. PPE. Does that ring a bell? Another one of those words, if word it can be called, which has bludgeoned its way almost into our everyday conversations and our newspapers and our news bulletins. Personal protection equipment, so absolutely vital for our frontline medical and support services as they give themselves to the struggle against the ravages of COVID-19. Arguably, the most difficult aspect of this great struggle is that the enemy, so-called, is invisible, and yet it's everywhere around us. Now, David, in this psalm, uh, has an enemy in mind. But I think it's clear that the enemy that he has in mind, and the enemy for whom he turns to God in prayer, is very visible indeed. He speaks in verses 3 to 5 of the psalm uh, of the wicked around him, of those who speak peace to their neighbours while evil is in their hearts. And in that sense, his enemies are very visible. They are devious and deceitful. The evil is that, in their, it, that is in their hearts expresses itself in their deeds. And David uh, calls them workers of evil. However, the psalmist knows too that, uh, if you like, the spring of their evil deeds and the spring of their evil thoughts um, is uh, invisible. Uh, if you like, if we can put it like this, the, the spring of those evil thoughts and the spring of that evil is the devil himself, who of course is the great deceiver, but the one who is hidden from us. The powers of evil are all around us. We cannot see them, but we can see clearly their devilish fruits. We see those devilish fruits in the lives of those who are corrupted by sin. We see the opposition and the antipathy to the truth of God and his word. We see the shameful, dishonouring way in which men regard and speak of our Lord Jesus. Now David's refuge in these uh, difficult and dangerous circumstances is his God, whom he describes in this the latter part of the psalm with three words. And the first is this, the Lord is my strength. And here there's an implicit recognition and confession of the psalmist's weakness. He surveys his circumstances and clearly he's aware that surviving the attacks upon him is beyond his own limited strength and ability. He says in verse one, if uh, you were silent to me, then I become like those who, who go down to the pit. In our Ulster dialect, we would say, if God doesn't come to his aid, he's finished. The strength to withstand does not lie in human resources and, uh, and in human strength. And remember that David had significant resources to call upon, uh, but these ultimately were not enough to uh, deliver him from the evil and the uh, work of the enemy around him. The enemy's powers are supernatural and beyond the natural enmity of men and women around us are the workings of that supernatural evil one. They exceed the strongest of man's resources. And so David looks up and the Lord hears the voice of his child. He says in verse 6 here, he has heard the voice of my pleas um, for mercy. There in his God, 
are the resources that he needs. There is the strength to meet every opposing force and foe. The personal pronouns here are so important, aren't they? You know, he talks about my strength. He has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. Uh, and those personal pronouns uh, are vital. David speaks of my rock, my strength. It's not simply that God is the rock and the strength, but my rock and my strength. It all emphasizes this personal relationship between God and the psalmist. And it reminds us very clearly that the promises of God are for those who know him, for those who have a personal relationship to him, for those who are his children. See, I think that it's uh, true to say that those who are not his children, uh, those who live in disobedience of him and of saving purpose, have no right to these precious promises. They're for the family of God. And if you would know their richness and their greatness, then you must come to know the one who makes those promises. The Lord is my strength, says David. Second, he says, the Lord is my shield. Again, we think of uh, personal protection equipment and uh, the idea of a shield and shielding is very much at the centre uh, of that. Um, some have translated the term here for uh, shield as protector. The Lord is my protector. And that's a helpful paraphrase. The picture is of the believer under attack, under duress, and God himself providing him with defence as a shield. Uh, as an article of defensive equipment, if you like. A shield is something raised between the individual and a, a, and a threatening danger to offer that protection. It's something which we're told wards off the fiery arrows that are shot in our direction. Paul talks about those fiery arrows in the, the New Testament. And he talks about the shield of faith. <clears throat> the picture's a rather different one here in this psalm. Uh, uh, but no less sure, no less reassuring. It is the Lord Almighty himself who is our shield here. Wonderful thought. Just as a shield is something that we take with us wherever we go in the battlefield, so the picture here is of the Lord himself surrounding us with his presence wherever we go. David expresses it in Psalm 139 in another way. He, he, he says, you, you hem me in behind and before, or as one translation puts it, you are all around me on every side. You protect me with your power. Trouble all around you. A pandemic raging all around which we cannot see. Strange and anxious times. But as believers, we need to understand and hold on to this precious truth that our God, our protector, our shield is all around us so that nothing can touch us which is not part of his perfect and gracious purpose for us. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my shield. And finally, David says in the last verse, the Lord is my shepherd. And that's a lovely, precious image of the Lord Almighty, our shepherd. We know this picture so well, um, often brought to us in scripture, but uh, it's good to pause and uh, meditate again upon the richness of this description of our Lord and his relationship to us. In one sense, it gathers up all the other images, doesn't it? And, and it ties them all together. Um, it, it, it expresses, if you like, their joint significance uh, to us. We don't have to spell it out again, for it's so well known. The Eastern shepherd lived with his sheep. He led them from pasture to pasture. He provided for them. He took them to the streams that refreshed them. He guarded them from attack by predators, even becoming the door of their sheepfold by night, putting himself between them and danger. What a picture. What reassurance for us when anxiety, dismay, or discouragement threaten to take hold of us. Yahweh, the Lord of all, is our shepherd. And our Lord Jesus took that title to himself and he infused it with the richness of meaning when he said, I am the good shepherd, the beautiful shepherd, the perfect shepherd, the complete shepherd, the one who never will fail us. The chorus uh, of the old hymn puts it uh, very simply, but 
no one really could express it better. Following Jesus ever day by day. Nothing can harm me when Jesus leads the way. And that's the ground. That's the assurance. Jesus, uh, the shepherd, is my all and all in all. So David says he puts his trust in God, who is my strength, who is my shield, who is my shepherd. May you know his presence and his peace and his strength and his joy in these days. May the Lord bless you. God bless. Bye-bye.